Hi, my name is Susie Barstow, uh, and I'm, <laughs> I gotta stop. Hi, my name is Susie Barstow, and this is my very first video, so please bear with me. It's not going to be too long, but I would like to share some of my um, watercolor tips and tricks, and I think most of it will be good for beginners, as also for advanced, and it, it will be pretty brief. I'm going to be doing more, and I'm starting this out with my uh, palette. You don't really need all these colors, you know, after a while you get little favorites that you kind of want to add to it. Actually, I'm showing my palette for two reasons. Number one is that when you buy watercolor in tubes, I feel it's much easier to paint with. Um, you get nice consistency. And you just put the tubes in a palette like this that has a cover on it. And to keep them nice and moist, you just spray them with a the spray bottle every time you open it again the lid will keep them pretty moist but some might dry out and I only use distilled water to spray my watercolors with I figure if I'm putting my time into them and my money into buying very good watercolors I want to take good care of them and I'm certainly not going to put California tap water into them so that's what I spray these with uh, to keep them damp and moist and it's just like opening a fresh tube every time I get to use them and you'll also notice that my palette is pretty clean. I try not to, if I get the blue into the red or something like that, I always clean it out right away. Now, I've taken some classes where the, you can't hardly tell what one color is from the other. And those artists create beautiful work. They do really nice landscapes and stuff like that. And I like their work. But if you see my work, I like really pure, bright colors. So I'm kind of fussy I guess you could say or persnickety or whatever about not mixing my colors that I don't want mixed that I'm not going to put together on the work that I'm doing so I get something out once it gets in there I get it out with a brush I keep it pretty clean I also happen to write down the names of the colors next to next to the palette you can see here I don't know if that's going to show <laughs> I'm probably not going to forget them, but just in case I do, um, I've got the names there as well. And these are all Winsor Newton colors except two. And I highly recommend that you purchase good watercolors even if you are a beginner. And I, beginner. And I uh, also recommend that you purchase Winsor Newton. You don't need a whole lot to begin with. And... Um, you know, you can pick out seven or eight nice ones that you like in smaller tubes till you get used to them. But it's better to buy fewer good, expensive, you know, watercolors, I hate to use that word, than to buy cheap ones. A lot of people start out trying to do it thinking they don't know if they're going to like it or not and keep the money down. But the problem is, if you have poor quality watercolors, you're probably not going to have a lot of success and you're probably not going to be real happy with what you have created. And uh, so it's better to do that. Other things you don't have to buy, but I would buy the best watercolors that you can afford. And um, if your budget is low, then buy less than 10 colors, depending on what you can afford. But do the best watercolors or you're going to give up even before you get started. And that's Part of what this is about, actually, is to help some people enjoy watercolors. It's always called the most difficult medium, and I would say that it probably is to a certain degree. But if you take your time to educate yourself and use some of the right things, you're probably tired of staring at my palette right now, huh? Well, anyway, I'll show you something else in a second. Um, if you If you learn about it, I, you will enjoy it. You know, you'll be much more successful. Uh, and it won't, it's not that difficult. Okay, I'm going to stop right here because I'm going to show you a few brushes too. Okay, I'm going to hold these as still as I can. The brushes are a little bit different than the watercolors. The one on the left, the yellow brush, is like a dollar crayon brush. Do not get a cheap brush to start out with. However, the one on the right is a Series 7 brush by Winsor Newton, and that's a $60 brush. 
and you really don't need to spend that much when you're starting out and I don't use my Series 7 brushes nearly as much as I do the one in the middle which is a royal brush it's got a nice soft grip it's synthetic fiber it maintains a nice springiness it loads up really well with watercolor and that actually is a fairly reasonable watercolor brush and I think that's perfect for most most beginners don't buy a real cheap one the Crayola one on the left I mean I could not paint with that and you don't really need to go for a series 7 which is sable hair on the right the one in between is just perfect okay these are about all of the brushes that I use I hate to tell you I have about 30 more that I've tried out over the years and not used but I highly recommend that you get round tip brushes which are this this is a round tip brush right here get three or four of those sizes and also flat brushes this is a flat brush there are several other different types of filberts um, there are uh, riggers but beginning you really only need two different shapes a flat one and a round one it's also good to have a nice big flat one to put washes across your paper and everything and um, this is kind of like a mop which also allows me just to kind of slop things all over if I want to do that but you don't need to spend a lot you don't need a whole ton of brushes and as I said earlier you do not need to get the most expensive either nor do you want to get the cheapest okay so I'll just show them all to you again real quick here what I have there we go